Hello everyone. Well, I've got a Dyson cordless to show you today. And at the time of making this video, I believe this is the cheapest cordless stick from Dyson you can buy in the UK. This costs at the moment $229.99, which is a claimed saving of £100. So the regular price is $329.99, but this was $229.99. So it brings a Dyson down to a more affordable price and uh, with the cost of living nowadays in the UK if you need a new vacuum cleaner many people don't have four, five, six hundred pounds to spend on a Dyson. They still might want a Dyson. So this is a much more affordable entry level price. So without any further ado let's uh, get it open. Typical Dyson packaging. Expect this has got um, safety instructions in. They don't tend to give you printed instructions anymore. Dyson expect you to scan the QR code, QR thing on their box to get the full instructions. I think this is just safety instructions. Yes, it's regular, <laughs> regulatory, com regulatory compliance and safety information. So. We can look at that later if we're bored. There is a quick start guide included and there is the QR code. That's it. <laughs> so you can scan that with your phone and you'll get uh, online instructions. I expect there'll be videos as well. You'll be able to register your guarantee. So it'll be a two year, I'm pretty sure it's a two year guarantee with this particular Dyson. But we've got enough instruction, instructions there to get us started, to get the machine assembled and charging ready for use. So it's a while since I've, well it's not that long since I opened a new Dyson, but uh, this is one of the extra accessories you get. I think in response to Shark's Flexology, this is a similar sort of thing, but it's an additional tool enabling you to bend for under low furniture or clean up high and that is powered so when you attach the powered accessory to it it will still be powered here we have very familiar Dyson small cleaning tools combination nozzle little litter picker there that's for your curtains your upholstery and if you want to do any hard surfaces or dusting softer surfaces like lampshade, dusting your Venetian blinds, you can pull out the brush, nice soft brushes on these. And we've got the click fitting. And a reasonable length crevice tool. That's nice. Nice and slim for your nooks and crannies down the sides of your sofa. Get those biscuit crumbs. Here we have the charging adapter, mains adapter, like so, which will fit into the wall mounted dock here. But of course, if you don't want to screw that to the wall, you can just charge the machine out of the, this, you can just leave this in the box and just plug the machine directly in to the charger. You're not allowed to drill holes in your wall if you live in a rented accommodation or you just don't want your vacuum cleaner on show if you want it tucked away. You don't have to put it on the wall. There's separate instructions for fitting. We've got a nice red satin wand. And even at this price point, oh, and I'm glad to see that. This is the better of the smaller motorized tools. The earlier ones had much sparser brushes. This has got denser brushes, as you can see. So this is a much more effective tool in, in my experience than the earlier ones that just looked, look, looked a bit moth-eaten, the brushes, but as you can see, proper brushes on this. So that's your mini motorized tool for your above floor cleaning. You can you clean upholstered furniture with that, your stairs, car mats, dog beds, etc. Very handy tool to have. And this is the main 
floor, carpet and floor motorised head. And this is a newer model because we do have hair removal veins, it's saying. Slightly different design. Combination of the soft carbon fibre for your hard floors and very short but stiffer red brushes for carpet cleaning. Two little wheels at the front and of course you've got the wheels at the back here. It rotates and pivots and you will be able to take the brush roll out. This end cap comes off and the brush roll comes out for cleaning. But yes, it's got uh, a little hair removal veins. But in my experience, I've never really found this type of brush roll to be too bad for hair wrap. But Dyson obviously following other manufacturers want to include that feature, so that's what they've done. So yeah, pretty good. I think this cleaner for £230 is pretty good value. It's an older design, obviously. There are newer designs and more powerful Dysons, but you get what you pay for, don't you? So here's the cleaner itself. I think that's everything. Let me just check. There's nothing else in the box. Yep. So, yes, it's an older design, but it's got the newer bin emptying and there's a, a different design at the top here with a filter so to empty the bin we've got the red lever that you pull up and you can see the bin door opens and this whole unit comes up and a little red sort of silicon or rubber seal can help clean any hair or anything else wrapped around yeah it's not too bad weight wise quite nicely balanced ah oh, we've got some power obviously it's got the trigger so no permanent on off button two suction speeds got the regular and max we do have an exhaust filter despite this being sort of entry level there is an exhaust filter which will again be washable that just fits on the end. Will it work without the filter in place? It does actually switch on without the filter in place on this model. Always best to put the filter back though because that is your exhaust. There's another filter obviously inside the bin. Filter wash. So slightly different design at the top but very similar looking filter to previous models. Now these have a bit of a quirk now I'm glad to see actually that this part is now see-through because with this type of filter they may look clean when you take them out the outside of that filter will look clean and you think oh it doesn't need washing but these tend to gather the dust on the inside and I'm not sure that's not really designed to come off you can take these tops off but you might end up breaking the tabs but at least being clear you can just about see the filter inside so you really need to pay particular attention when you're cleaning these filters because as I said the dirt starts off on the inside it won't show on the outside on these so you have to keep rinsing it squeezing out rinsing shaking uh, until the filters clean but yeah that's slightly different design to the previous version I've looked at so what I need to do first though before I can show you this machine in action is to actually charge the cleaner up so I'll need to undo the mains cable off the adapter so that's about a meter in length so I need to plug that in to charge the machine if you don't want to fix it to the wall there's a little port on the back just below the handle at the bottom of the handle so you can just put this machine on your worktop or next to the socket on the floor, just tucked, it, tucked out of the way and it'll charge up. There is a battery indicator here. So we'll plug in and we'll see what that shows. As the battery is charging, these lights will progress. So we're on the second light and that's flashing. When the battery is nearly charged, the third light will start to flash. When it's fully charged, the lights will go out completely.
And this will also indicate charge when you're using the machine. So when the battery is full, obviously all three lights will be charged. And when you've got low charge left, only one light will be illuminated. And then it'll flash when you need to charge the battery again. This Dyson V8 will take approximately five hours to fully charge. And once it's charged, it'll give you up to 40 minutes of runtime. Now I'm assuming that 40 minutes quoted is using the machine on its normal power level without a motorized accessory. Obviously, if you switch to maximum power, the runtime is going to reduce significantly. I'll just quickly show you the motorized tools and then I'll leave this machine alone to properly charge. The mini motorized tool fits directly onto the cleaner like so and in this configuration it's pretty light and easy to use for your stairs, your upholstery or take it out to clean your car. Let's have a look at the brushes rotating. And like the larger motorized head this brush roll does come out for easy cleaning. You just need a coin, you can remove this end cap the brush roll comes out. This is not an anti hair wrap brush roll, but it does come out without tools. Once the brush rolls out as well, you can check for blockages if it's not picking up. It's a lot easier access with the brush roll removed. You can use the brush roll like this, obviously, the motorized head directly on the cleaner, but you can also, if you want to, connect it to the end of the wand. So if you've got a large piece of furniture in your room, and it's only got a narrow area to clean that you can't fit the main carpet and floor head in, you can put the mini motorized tool and get into the smaller, tighter areas that you can't clean with the main nozzle. So that's good. But also you can attach the main carpet and floor head directly to the machine as well. So you can use this on your stairs. It will make quicker work of cleaning your stairs because it is you know, about double the width of the mini tool. So this will work in a similar way. But of course, when you're cleaning your carpets and hard floors, you will attach the wand. I'm going to plug the Dyson back in so we can fully charge the battery. So once the lights have stopped pulsating and have turned off altogether, I'll know the machine is ready for use. I know it's tempting to use your new machine when you first get it, but with any cordless vacuum cleaner, you should charge it fully before first use. So just put it to one side, forget about it, and then you can have your fun later. And I'll be having my fun with this Dyson very soon on this video, but I will be waiting the full five hours for the charge. The Dyson V8 is now fully charged and if you're interested I'll put all the specifications of this cleaner under the video including the charge and run times. Without any further ado I'm going to try the machine on my Saxony plush pile carpet. Now I've tested a lot of cordless and mains powered vacuum cleaners and they struggle with this type of carpet used on maximum speed. Most of them just cut out or you can't move the heads. So a lot of these machines I have to use on the minimum setting or the lower power setting. Now on this Dyson, we've only got two settings. We've just got the regular and max. So obviously I'm going to try it on the regular setting first. Now, on the regular setting, I had no trouble pushing the nozzle on the carpet. It glides along pretty smoothly. It grooms the pile. It's, uh, it's pretty t easy to push. And oh, just on that small area, I don't know if you can quite see, I've not put any dirt down yet, but there is dirt in the carpet. There's some hairs. In fact, there's some powder that I used to dry clean my carpet a couple of days ago and I have vacuumed subsequently with a big mains powered cleaner, but it's still finding some of that uh, dry cleaning powder in the carpet. So for day to day use, certainly initial reaction on its regular setting, it should be more than adequate for whipping around the house. OK, I'm going to switch to maximum now and see if that makes a difference with the ease of pushing this cleaner. Well, 
as you can see, as soon as I switch to maximum, the cleaner head cut out. I'll try doing it again, but this time I'll keep the cleaner head moving. It might work when the cleaner head's actually in motion. So I'm on maximum. No, it cut out again. So I'm not surprised by this. On this particular type of carpet, you can't use this machine on maximum power. I'm gonna try it on other types of carpet in my home, some shorter pile. And I'm sure on shorter pile carpet, I can clean in maximum mode. But for my living room that's got this plush pile, I'm going to have to use minimum only or just the standard. As I say, this is a basic Dyson. It only has minimum or maximum. There's no intermediate setting. It's a shame because if there was a setting in between maximum and minimum, it might work on sort of medium setting. But on this type of Dyson, it is an entry level machine. So it doesn't have all the fancy features of the V10, V11, V12, V15s that I've shown you on my channel previously. I've got some dog hair here, kindly supplied by Daisy. Not as much as I'd normally have, but she's only recently just come back from the dog grooming parlor. So she's had a full cut and blow dry. So I couldn't really get much hair off her, but there's enough here to do a demonstration of the Dyson pet hair cleaning off, off a carpet, obviously. You can use this Dyson with the mini motorized tool if you get pet hair on your sofas, on your stairs, on your pet bedding. In fact, this <laughs> Daisy's hair is sticking everywhere. I'm trying to rub it in a bit to the carpet. That'll do. So I'm just gonna pass the cleaner forward and back through the middle of this pet hair. Bear in mind, that I'm going to do this demonstration on the lower power setting. Well, as you can see, that's a pretty good result for one forward and one backward pass over the carpet using the Dyson V8 on its minimum setting. No problems with whisking away pet hair. Now onto the carpet, I've put some black rice, some red lentils and some green sand that's got a little bit of gold glitter in it. And I'm trying to rub the sand into the carpet a bit. Now, even mains powered vacuum cleaners have trouble with sand. They take several passes, especially on this type of carpet, there's quite a depth of pile to it. So I'm not expecting great things from this Dyson. But we'll see. I think it'll have no trouble coping with the surface dirt, the visible dirt that you can see that makes your room look untidy. Most vacuums should be able to cope with surface dirt. It's pecked hair and deep down dirt that some machines struggle with. But certainly as far as the red lentils and black sand, I think the Dyson should make a clean sweep We'll have a feeling after two passes, we're still gonna see old bits of glitter and some of the green sand. Okay, let's give it a go. Again, on this particular carpet, I'm having to use the Dyson on its lower power setting. Well, much as I predicted, the Dyson V8 coped pretty well with the surface litter, but if you look closely, there is still green sand left in the carpet. It might take several passes to remove it entirely using this machine, or if it doesn't remove it, I'm gonna to have to get an upright mains powered vacuum cleaner to really finish the job. So, certainly on the lower power setting this dyson is definitely not what you'd call a deep cleaner but as i said i can't use it on the higher setting on this particular carpet 
because the brush roll just cuts out. I'm going to try again though. On the reverse pass on maximum, it might work. It's often when you push the cleaner forward, then the brush roll will cut off automatically just to save the motor in the brush roll. So to see if I can get any more of this sand up, to give it a fair shot, I'm going to put it on maximum and just pull the machine back over the clean path and see if I can remove any more of the green sand. As you can see, the Dyson V8 did work in its maximum setting, but only when I pull the head back. If I was to push the head, I'm sure it will cut out. So I'm going to try it again. There is still sand. If we look very closely, there is still green sand. It's going to take multiple passes to get the green sand out of this carpet, but it's making a valiant effort for such a lightweight cordless vacuum. <laughs> The pet hair and debris that I put down during this demonstration is now in the bin. We can see Daisy's pet hair there. There's the green sand, the lentils, the black rice, and also some lighter colored debris, some lighter colored powder material. You can just see it there. And that is the dry cleaning powder that I used a couple of days ago on this carpet. And I have used two upright vacuum cleaners since, and they still have left some of the debris in the carpet, some of this fine cleaning powder. The Dyson's managed to pick that up, but if I was to go over it with any other vacuum cleaner, I'm sure it would find the dirt. So let's reveal the dirt just by pulling up on this lever. So it does have a good clean dirt system. Obviously at home, you do this over the bin and preferably an outside bin if you don't want to be breathing in too much of the dust, because that will happen with the best bagless cleaners. So I'll Try and do it gently. Give it a shake. And yes, we can see that the shroud is pretty clean. There was some pet hair wrapped around it, but as you empty the machine, as the bin drops down, it cleans any debris off the shroud. So that does work pretty well. So we can just close it up. And then we're ready to clean again. And now we're left with all this mess on my footstool. So I'm going to spread it out a bit and then we'll try the mini motorized tool. There definitely was a difference using the Dyson on its maximum power. It's made a valiant effort, as you can see on minimum, but there are some lines of green sand that it's left. But to finish this demo, I'm going to clean all this up on the minimum setting and then just finish up on maximum, just to ensure I've got all the neon sand out of this footstool.
Well, the Dyson V8 has made a good job of this footstool. It's certainly clean enough to sit on now, but full disclosure, the motorized brush did scatter quite a lot of the debris back onto the carpet. So I'm going to have to attach the wand and the main motorized floor tool and pick it all up. It's time to test the Dyson V8 on a hard floor now, so waste not, want not. I'm going to empty out all the dirt we've picked up previously on the floor, so uh, let's go for it. I'm going to spread this out a little bit, and then we'll try the machine on the hard floor. And for the hard floor, I shouldn't need to use the maximum setting, so I'm going to try and clean everything up using the Dyson on its minimum low power setting. At the time of filming this video, you can pick up the standard Dyson V8 for around £250, which makes it the cheapest Dyson cordless you can buy in the UK at the moment. This was a special edition that came with the Reach Under tool. The standard version for around £250 doesn't come with this, but you can, if you want it, buy it as an optional extra. So for the £250, you get the cleaner itself with the mini motorized tool. You get the main carpet and floor head that incorporates the hair removal veins. Of course, the wand, crevice tool, your combination brush, and of course, the charger and docking station. So for £250, I think it represents good value for money. If you're in the market for a cordless cleaner and your budget won't stretch to five or £600 for one of the more advanced Dysons, this is a very good entry level product. A lot of the demos I did in this video were done on the lower power setting. All the hard floor was cleaned on low power, picked up everything, even cleaned this plush pile carpet, took a few passes, but it did it and it cleaned all the mess off the footstool. This is also ideal because of its weight and size. It's good for the stairs, take it out and clean your car. And of course you can do your above floor cleaning by attaching any of the smaller cleaning tools to the end of the wand. So you can put the combination nozzle on with the brush out and you can reach up into the corners and get your cobwebs. So all in all, I would recommend this Dyson certainly over those many cheap Chinese cleaners you see on Amazon, all those no name brands you've never heard of. Personally, if you can stretch your budget, I would rather go for a brand you know because they've got a reputation to uphold. So if you buy a Dyson, you get the two year guarantee, you've got the availability of spare parts, and of course there is a helpline you can phone if you have any trouble with your machine. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you have any comments or questions about the Dyson V8, please comment below and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.